Good crowd on hand here today. It is chilly blanket weather. Temperature is in the mid 50s as we get ready to start today's game. And Jim Princeton will have to get that early possession to dictate the tempo of this game. It is very critical against Syracuse who scores most of their goals in the first quarter. And that's exactly what Princeton was able to do in their semifinal game against North Carolina as well as in their quarterfinal game against Maryland. And Greg Waller picks up the faceoff and advances towards the Syracuse net. You can see Syracuse looking for individual matchups. A little bit of confusion there. Princeton now settling their offense, taking it from either in front or behind the goal. The critical thing, they want the good matchup. Calkins sends it out to Andrew Moe. Winds up, and he scores. one nothing. just that simple and easy. Andrew Moe scores on Saran, who's a little bit nervous, a little bit unsettled in his first championship game. That shot he normally saves. This one bounces over his shoulder. So Princeton with a quick strike, and we'll be right back. Now, Princeton has won nine straight games, including two in this tournament, and they've jumped out to a very quick 3-0 lead, and that's got to be very pleasing to head coach Bill Tierney. And they did it on the sensational accuracy of their quarterback, Kevin Lowe. The All-American finds Tortolani coming off the crease area. What a target he is at 6'3", 2-0 the score for Princeton. And right after that, look inside. Brian Tomio slicing the defense of Syracuse. The third straight goal for the Princeton Tigers. Their speed has really surprised Syracuse. They have everything going their way, and Syracuse really has to be totally shell-shocked here. This is their biggest period, the first period. They've outscored opponents 74 to 41 in this period, and they just can't get on track. Well, finally, they have an excellent opportunity to do that. This is six on five, an extra man play for Syracuse. They'll be patient and work it around the horn here. It's a shot by Lockwood, and it's knocked away before it gets to the goal. Bacigalupo still yet to save a ball. Jim, we've seen this all through the first quarter. Princeton getting a stick on almost every feed or shot of Syracuse. Stolen back by Syracuse. They'll have another attempt. And here's Steve Bettinger. Sends it across, and Marichek fans it. Textbook, Syracuse transition, a layup missed by Marichek. Well, we have the MVP of the 1971 tournament joining us on the sidelines. Let's go down to Bob Rule. In this first period, Syracuse has been dominated by Princeton. Their, be their bench looks stunned. They are not playing to win the game. They are playing not to lose. It's a whole different mindset. Well, they better get a wake-up call rather quickly, Lee. At what point do you push the panic button? Is it still too early? This team has never faced panic. They haven't been shut out for 111 quarters. That's almost 30 games of lacrosse. Well, it looks as though that streak will come to an end as Princeton will inbound the ball with a little time remaining here in the second period. Shot is taken and missed by Andrew Moe, and that could have really stretched it. And Jim, one thing that's very obvious is that the speed and quickness of Princeton is really stunning Syracuse. Syracuse is used to running away from the opposition. They can't run away from the Princeton Tigers in this first quarter. And there's an important breakup made right there. And that will give Syracuse the opportunity to regroup as the quarter ends with Syracuse trailing by three in a stunner. <laughs> Jim Gray along with Lee Felsmo and Bob Rule. Princeton has jumped out to a 4-0 lead, and the faithful who've come down from New Jersey to see their Tigers are very happy with what they've seen so far. Well, Princeton continues to stun everybody with not only great defense, but great offense like this. The backside, John Bernstein on the power play, the extra man. He was waiting there for that backdoor shot to give Princeton a 5-0 lead. Then moments later, Tortolani finds Andrew Moe fighting off a pick in the crease. We've seen that before. That's three goals from that crease area. The slashing midfielders really doing a job against the defense of Syracuse. Well, who'd have thunk it? Certainly not Syracuse and its faithful. Bill Tierney's all smiles. There's a train station nearby, and I don't know if Roy Simmons Jr. would like to catch the first one out of town. Minute 18 left here in the first half. Here's Matt Ryder. Well, he's ended the doldrums. Syracuse is on the board. Penalty flag is thrown. They're going to wave off that flag. The goal will count. It's now 6-1, to one, and Syracuse finally has a bright spot. Coach Bill Tierney was very afraid of the ability of Matt Ryder, and this is why. He wants to make something happen, dives across the crease and scores. Important not only because it's the first goal for Syracuse, but this is really the first good shot they've had against the All-American goalie from Princeton. 
with the Orangemen on the board, Princeton should know that no lead is big enough, and they should know that from their own experience. They led 7 to 2 and 13 to 9 in their semifinal game against North Carolina, and each time North Carolina came back and tied them. Coach Bill Tierney has told his team that let Syracuse have a run of two or three, but don't give them the four or five goal run. But Syracuse once again remains in control and in possession as the clock winds down here in the first half. Andy Moe being watched by Tom Gilmartin. Oh! Andy Moe unexpectedly doesn't let the clock run out, turns around and fires one and scores. Andy Moe is showing more foot speed and quickness than Syracuse has seen in the last three years. This guy is sensational. He is so quick and fast. The explosion here, watch, he'll make a little juke move to his left. Gil Martin commits, and then he explodes forward for the right-handed shot. The slide's too late, and he beats Saran over the shoulder. And if you put this in perspective, Leaf, it was just five years ago, Andy Moe was a freshman. He was on Bill Turney's first team that went 2-13. and 13. A total turnaround now. He took a year off to travel. He now comes back and is the focal point in a championship game on a team that's only lost two games all season. And we have a whistle and a penalty flag with just 36 seconds left here in the first half. And we're going to have a very costly mistake made by Princeton. Pushing foul on Scott Reinhardt. And Bill Turney can't believe it. Not the time to make this mistake. You never want to go man down to this team. Syracuse is so explosive in the open field. Now you're giving them a man advantage. And even if Syracuse is to score, Leaf, would you feel they would still be demoralized at halftime, or would that give them a real shot in the arm? Well, it is the emotional lift that they need here. The distance between these two teams is not as scary as the fact that the Syracuse offense really has not been on track. Well, that distance just decreased by one. Their main man, Tom Marichek, comes up with a goal. It's now 7-2. to two. And it was a textbook extra man play. It starts with Tom Marichek. He did a beautiful job as the quarterback of that extra man. Let's watch it here. It starts here with Marichek. The defense right here will follow the path of the ball counterclockwise, leaving him wide open to the right. Now as it gets to the far side, they feed all the way across to the back door. And right there is Tom Marichek to redirect the shot in. Textbook extra man play. And leave both teams have been a little lethargic on defense, flat-footed here in the last minute of play. Well, Syracuse is just getting back to where they're comfortable with their game. Princeton, a little bit afraid now of that explosive transition style that Syracuse is famous for. And Princeton has controlled the faceoff once again, and they may have a final shot on goal here as the first half winds down. Broken up, however, and it's taken away by Rick Beardsley, and that will end the first half. That shot won't count. But Princeton has got to be very pleased with what they've accomplished here in the first half. They've controlled the tempo of this game, Lee Felsmo. Dominated in every phase, but the important thing for Syracuse is that they've scored two of the last three goals. They've got some emotional stability in their offense. Princeton ahead, and it didn't take long as third period action got underway for them to expand upon their lead. They score first in quarter number three, and it's Scott Reinhardt, who's the leading scorer in the midfield position, just running right past Reggie Thorpe, the best long stick defenseman. And the slide from Tully comes too late. One on one again, right in Saran's face. That's goal number eight for Princeton. But it didn't take long for Syracuse to answer that goal with their feared transition game. This is Brian Tully bringing the ball down from the defensive end. He finds Duburn Reed in the middle of the field. Duburn Reed gets a lot of attention from the defense. Gives it off to Archer, and Jamie Archer scores goal number three for Syracuse. And the Orangemen are a team that can really never be counted out. To put this in a little bit of perspective, they are to lacrosse, having won three of the last four titles, what Lombardi's Packers were in the 60s, what the Yankees were to baseball, and what the Celtics have been to basketball. So don't count them out, even though they trail by five. The only team to have won three straight national championships. Mad scramble for the ball. And a lot of intense hitting, really putting a hat on him. Jim, there's no question that in the third quarter here, Syracuse has come out to play. They know that their championship is in jeopardy. Princeton is knocking him all over the field. Not this half, says Coach Roy Simmons. Well, Saran comes all the way out of net, gets it ahead to Bettinger. To Jamie Archer, no! Great save by Tkaloop, rebound, Archer, it scores! What a great follow-up by Jamie Archer. He takes a low shot. He was going to shoot low right from the time he got the ball. 
And Bacigalupo ran low all the way. He went down to make the save, and then it left the high shot wide open. The follow-up is what's key. Archer shoots, ball dribbles out, and Archer gets nailed as he picks up the loose ball. The follow-up is a layup for him with Bacigalupo on the turf. Two straight goals for Archer. He looks like he may be the guy to pull this offense off the carpet. Got to feel a bit for Bacigalupo. He made just an absolutely great save. He's been tremendous in goal today. And what that last effort shows you, Jim, is that it's important to make the second save, just like in soccer. The first save is important, but you've got to get the second save, collect the ball, and get it out of your defensive zone. Shot was missed by Greg Waller. Princeton will retain possession with just 10 seconds left, but Leaf, the shots that Princeton is getting were going in in the first half from this range. Now you can see the momentum changing. They're just a bit off target here in the third period. Very fine line. You aim for just inside the pipe, and the difference is only about three inches. They'll have one last chance here as the quarter winds down, and that'll do it. So Syracuse is crawling back into the game. Princeton still in control, but Syracuse with the momentum as we go to the fourth period. Welcome back to historic Franklin Field. Princeton leading by four as we begin the fourth quarter. Man advantage for Syracuse. An illegal stick in between periods was discovered being used by Justin Tortolani. So now Syracuse has a man advantage. And Syracuse has come up big in the fourth period, Leaf. They've outscored their opponents by 20 goals. It's scary when you think about those numbers. Also, when you think about them being a man up on you. Gil Martin, no. Lockwood, yes. Eight to five. Now well, here's a team that's known for its offensive explosions. That's what has to scare Princeton right now. Three great plays on this series, and it starts in the midfield with Gil Martin. Watch the face dodge. He'll get the ball up top. A face dodge gets him right past the defense. Now the big save by Bacigalupo, but Lockwood beats two defenders to redirect it past the flat-footed goalie. One more time, the shot right off the chest, but then it's Lockwood who outraces, outthinks the two defenders. Big goal for Syracuse. And every time that Princeton has been tested today, they've come back big. They have withstood every challenge from Syracuse, and can they do it again? Here's Bacigalupo way out of net, being pestered by Jamie Archer, and he creates a turnover. Well, this is the offense that starts with the defense of Syracuse. They ride better than any team in Division I lacrosse. They put a lot of pressure on you. That's the kind of pressure that gets the ball back in their offensive zone. The Orangemen still working with the man advantage due to the penalty on the illegal stick to Tortellani. Here's Archer. Just a few seconds left in this penalty. The rider, an impossible angle, and he hits the back of the net. How he got that one through, but he found the top right portion of the goal. And now Syracuse is pulled to within two, and Princeton is on their heels. Wait a minute, Jim, there's a little bit of confusion. One referee waved that goal off. Let's take a look. Look at the top of the screen. A Princeton player running in. There's the shot by Ryder. What a rocket. And the goal signaled good. Tierney absolutely livid. It was something in the substitution box. Jim, the penalty had just elapsed. They made a substitution. And I think Tierney's saying that a Syracuse player went on the field. That would give them too many players. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players there. You can only have 10 on the field at a time. There's nine. And there's 10. Now on the sideline, right up here is where the players would come on the field. Nobody is in that area. They look to be legal. And the shot from Ryder just right past a flat-footed Bacigalupo. And there's the referee signaling good for the moment. But upfield, that same official turns around and then says no goal. Now Bacigalupo giving the official the business. And Tierney and Bacigalupo really don't seem like they have much of a case. They're pointing to that substitution area. And when their player came on, they're saying a Syracuse player came with them. The information we get from the sideline from Bob Rule is that even if the player did go on the field, the officials have ruled that it had no bearing on the play, so the goal will stand. And now we have another whistle and a penalty flag. And this time, Greg Waller is going to go off. It's going to be another man advantage for 30 seconds, and Syracuse can now pull to within one. Very dangerous position, obviously, for Coach Bill Tierney. That explosive power play, the extra man play for Syracuse is on board again. Packed and loaded. With a man advantage, they'll go to work and try and set up and get a good shot. 
Princeton led in this game eight to two. And now with just a couple of minutes gone by here in the fourth period, they can cut it to one. Here's Charlie Lockwood. It out front to Gil Martin. Gets it over to Marichek behind the net. Archer misses. Nice save by Bocchalupo. But right there is Bettinger. Lockwood sails in. Bocchalupo throws his stick. The ball ends up in the back of the net. We now have a one goal game. Well, we saw Ryder take his own flight to score a goal, and now Lockwood mimics that same pattern. That flight pattern has gotten them two goals. Watch how tough it is for the goalie to save this, because once Lockwood takes off, the goalie Bajigalupo is flat-footed. He's sealed against the pipe. That's what you learn to do. You seal that inside area, and then he's in no position to go out against the flying body. He just throws the stick to try to make the save. Well, we've talked about depth and experience, and Syracuse has been able to use that experience. It's now been a little bit over three periods, and they have been able to withstand everything that Princeton has thrown at them. It's now just a one-goal game. Welcome back to Franklin Field. Syracuse has cut the margin to one. And as well as Princeton played in the first half is as well as Syracuse is playing here in the second half. And that's the scary part to the Princeton team. Look at the shots on goal. First half, Princeton double. And this half looks like Syracuse with a huge lead, 8 to 22. So now Syracuse looking to tie the game. It's been a long uphill struggle for the Orangemen. And Dom Finn working down low has the shot knocked away. Great help by the backside defenseman who came in behind Bajigalupo to help make that save. Todd Higgins tries to clear it. And we've got some hitting going on down on the field. You don't think that these guys go home with a bunch of bruises? Here's Don Finn. It's in! The game's tied! Syracuse has finally fought their way back. The sophomore, All-American candidate Don Finn. Finally gets Syracuse to a tie game. This is one of the offensive stars that has worried Coach Bill Tierney from Princeton. He's been silent all game, finally tying it up. Roy Colsey starts this. He's a freshman, one of the most highly sought players in high school lacrosse. Gets it over to Gil Martin, who looks all the way to the wing. Dom Finn's got tremendous quickness. You can see Bajigalupo go to his knees. Watch how he goes to his knees, guessing low. He guesses low, shot comes high, 8-8. They've been shooting high on Bocchalupo the entire second half. Had a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he says that sometimes the high shots do bother him because he tends to guess low. And right now what you're seeing is Syracuse has scouted this team very well, and they know that. Look at the stats. They were dominated by Princeton early. Now they're evening out. They're almost dead even all the way across the board. That's got to worry Princeton. Syracuse is on a run. And as we wind down here in the fourth quarter, you can't help but think that this is really, truly student athletes. Great save by Bocchalupo. And that these student athletes are truly playing for the love of the game. There is no professional career to pursue after this. So this is the pinnacle, particularly of the seniors' careers. This is the Super Bowl, no question about it. And it'll be interesting to see right now how Princeton reacts to being tied for the first time in the game. I'll guarantee you they'll be very disciplined. They're in this game because of their great talent and the fact that they do exactly what they're supposed to do. And Princeton gets much of their discipline from Pete Carrill, the head basketball coach. It's interesting that Bill Turney will take his entire team over to watch the basketball practice because he says if you can't learn from watching Pete Carrill and what he does, does with those players, you're blind. Here's Greg Waller backing in. Penalty flag, shot, score! This is something that Coach Tierney has schooled his players to watch out for. The rap check from the Syracuse players. They're aggressive. They don't like to wait. Watch Lockwood get a little antsy. As soon as Waller feels the rap check, he rolls inside, protects the stick, and just slam dunks it home. He was waiting for Lockwood to commit. When he got the commitment, he made him pay for it. And Princeton has met the challenge on every occasion today. 
And if they can hang on, they will capture their first NCAA lacrosse championship. The Tigers lead by one with time winding down. Rick Beardsley knocks the ball away for Syracuse, and we have a whistle. And we're going to have a foul called on Rick Beardsley for holding. And the Orangemen can ill afford that with just a minute 30 left. They put a man in the penalty box. Well, this can decide the national championship. Beardsley makes his mistake by keeping his stick on the shoulder and trying to hold low back. Had he used a couple rapid chops or checks, he would have gotten away with it. So with a man advantage, Princeton looks to be in good shape. They've won the Ivy League title this year for the first time in 25 years. They'll be very patient as they'll try and take some time off the clock. The clock is now on their side. Just six seconds left on the penalty. This is where the speed and quickness of Syracuse pays great dividends. Look at the pressure they put on Princeton. And Syracuse gets the ball. Princeton eats up a lot of time, but they don't get a shot off. Here's Brian Tully. He heaves it the length of the field. Bacigalupo, he fans it. It's picked up by Marichek. He scores! What a mistake by Bacigalupo. The old veteran Tom Marichek makes Bajgalupo pay for his mistake, but it started with Tully, who made a huge mistake, just throwing this ball down to nobody in particular. Bajgalupo comes out, all he has to do is send it back up, and this game is virtually over. In his haste, 30 yards out of the goal, he just fans at it. Too nervous about the offensive players around them. Marichek scoops it up, fakes low on Mariano, goes high on the defenseman, an easy score. But what in the world could Scott Bocicalupo be thinking about? Why is he so far out of the goal? Well, it's a great strategy, but it's bad execution. This team is aggressive. This team is a team that puts pressure on from the defensive end. He just made a mistake, and Marichek picks it up. That's why they're great in transition, makes them pay for it again. And you really have to feel for Bacigalupo. He has been nothing short of sensational today in goal. And he comes up with a critical mistake at an opportunity at that point to simply ice the game. All he has to do is catch the ball. He'll have his chances again in this game. He's been sensational throughout this one. His team has confidence. There's no doubt about that. Overtime looms if no one scores here in the last 38 seconds. Princeton goes on the attack and we have a whistle. Timeout has been taken by Princeton's Tigers. They'll try and set up for a final play. We go 100, but have the ball. They can't we have the ball. Play. 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 Well, the strategy has been set by Bill Turney for the Tigers. A national championship now on the line. Just 37 seconds remain. Leaf, where do you go and who? Well, we know the heroes by now. Lowe is a control guy. A couple of different people can go ahead and be the finisher. Reinhardt is certainly one of them, number 11, one of the best midfielders that Princeton has. I would say the matchup they've had trouble with all day long, Syracuse has, has been Brian Tully. He's been a little bit slow against all the Princeton people. Watch that matchup. Reinhardt to win. Nope, he doesn't get it. Mad scramble in Princeton with 14 seconds. We'll have another shot. Closest team to the ball as it goes out of bounds, retains possession on a shot. Here comes Kevin Lowe. He'll look for someone, the great assist man. Finds Tortellani on Alani at the pipe. Rebound comes out in front, Mountain is drowned. No! Off the helmet of Winship, and we have overtime. Unbelievable, those two shots, either one could have gone. One hits a pipe, one hits a helmet. OT coming up. Well, Justin Tortellani had a wide open shot. You can't ask for a better shot in this situation. Tortellani was the single player who brought them past the University of Maryland to get them into the semifinals. Watch low as he finds Tortellani, and then he just takes the left-handed shot right off the pipe, far side of Saran. That shot, Winship just looks it right into his face mask. Beautiful job of saving the possible game winner from Saran. 
Under normal circumstances, that might hurt, but I'm sure he was happy to take that shot in the head. Did you see the reaction of Roy Simmons Jr. His team has battled back all day, and now we have overtime in the lacrosse championships for the first time since 1986, when North Carolina defeated Virginia 10-9. Here are the rules for overtime. They play sudden death. The first team to score wins. They'll be playing a four-minute period. For Princeton, their last NCAA championship was all the way back in 1964 in fencing, so this represents quite an opportunity for them, Leaf. And Jim, they have much more experience in overtime or close games, Princeton does. Two overtime wins in this season, plus they're four and two in one goal games this year. Syracuse, 0 and one in one goal games, and they haven't played any overtime. Usually, Syracuse is way out in front. And we haven't talked about it. Syracuse, 13 and one, their only loss came to Johns Hopkins. Mad scramble taking place as we get into overtime, and it's finally picked up by Fazy. And Syracuse will get underway, and they'll have the first attempt to win this game as they go into their offensive set. Everybody knows what's at stake. You've seen the key players. I think Dom Finn, right here, number 26, matches up speed and quickness wise as well as anybody against the great Princeton roster. So they send it over to Dom Finn. He'll work against Andy Moe. Takes a slap to the head. Works free. Takes a shot. Saved by Bacigalupo. Nice shot. Nice save. Well, Bacigalupo just stands in there as calm as you please. And one shrug of the shoulder makes a save. Dom Finn with an All-American type move. Comes in. Little dip move. Protects the stick. And Bacigalupo very casually raising the arm to make the save. So they'll try it again. Here's John Barr working on Mo. Sends it out front to Ryder. Ryder had a good shot at it, and he goes wide to the right. Once again, Syracuse will retain possession. Two good shots now for Syracuse. And John Barr was the hero of the game against Johns Hopkins to get him into this final. We haven't heard much from him today. Syracuse in control of overtime so far. You see the slides coming early. Princeton eager to slide. They made a decision before this game, Jim, that they were going to go ahead with the slide, something that many teams don't do because of the great stick work of Syracuse. Here's John Barr. He's looking for an opening. Works against Mo. Andy Mo all over the defensive end of the field. Riding him very well, and we have a whistle, and there's going to be a timeout on the field. Timeout taken by Syracuse. Syracuse. Tied at nine. We're in overtime. Syracuse will inbound the ball. Two minutes, four seconds left to play. What a game we have been treated to. Jim Gray along with Leif Elsbo and Bob Rule from Franklin Field in Philadelphia. And Roy Simmons is keeping that first line in there. He's got his six best offensive players. Nobody would expect any different. They work it around the horn. Greg Waller strips the ball from Barr, and they'll go the other way. Well, a great double team by Mariano set that up. He came off the crease to double team and get the ball back for Princeton. Here's David Morrow. Falls down to Tortolani. In front again. Another pipe job. The second time he's hit the pipe. One left-handed shot earlier on hit the left pipe. This right-handed shot hits the right pipe. We stay at nine, and we have another timeout. This time taken by Princeton. Here we go as the fast break comes down, starting on the defensive end. Look at the movement by Princeton to get the ball in the seam against Syracuse. Threw three players, wide open shot against Saran, who has been doing a very fantastic job of moving across the plane of the goal, covering up as much area as possible. Tortellini two inches off of winning the game twice. He's had 32 goals on the season. And he's hit the pipe a couple of times today, and he's going to remember hitting the pipe a lot more than any of those goals throughout the season. But they'll get another shot at it here. It's the sophomore, Scott Reinhardt. Oh, and he's being choked. 
And Mike Doyle just put his stick right up around the neck, and he's going to go off a penalty against Syracuse. Well, Reinhardt has been killing the Syracuse team with that out-of-bounds play. He's got tremendous speed. Earlier today, he scored against Reggie Thorpe, the best long sticks player. Now, Roy Simmons puts his smaller guy, his faster guy, Mike Doyle. He's quicker, but he makes a critical mistake by letting him get behind him. Well, it's all in front of the Tigers right now. A terrific opportunity with a man advantage. Sarans had pressure all day. Nothing like this, though. And Todd Stratton, Jim, took that shot right in his stomach. Number 31, the defenseman, helping out Saran. Time winding down on the penalty. A shot by Tortolani. No good. So they get two good shots off during the penalty. Neither of them are they able to convert on. And now they'll get one more attempt, possibly, before the penalty goes off. Shot by Morrow. They do get the shot. The penalty is off. They've withstood all the pressure. You can call this guy Saran Rap because he has had a total rap on the net. Here's Kevin Lowe. Chris Saran once again. Great save. Picked up by Morrow. He throws it away. But Tortolani comes up with it, and Princeton, who has dominated here in overtime, will have another opportunity. And this is the matchup they want. Tortolani against Tully, number 41. Princeton working for a final shot here in the first overtime. Picked up by the defense and into Saran's stick. So we go the other way with just five seconds left here. Ball is picked up by Lockwood. He's aware of the clock. He's got to shoot, and he can't pull the trigger. So we go to double overtime. No blood here in the first one. Remember, it's sudden death. We remain tied. This will be the third double overtime in NCAA final history. In 73, is a 10-9 Maryland win over Hopkins. In 1980, Hopkins won 9-8 over Virginia. And there's been some absolutely great goaltending by both goaltenders. Let's take a look. This time, it's Chris Saran, and he has just been magnificent here in overtime. He's had a great second half, and the pressure has been intense on both ends of the field. But again, here's Saran coming up big. A stuff shot against Lowe. He went high on Lowe, you might say. Now Bill Turney is having his say. Sending out instructions. What a game we've been treated to. Good to have you along. We go to the second overtime. Again, it's a four-minute period. One timeout per side, and it's sudden death. The first team to score. They will be the new NCAA champions. Very familiar position for these two guys, Bob Fazy and Greg Waller. They've been doing it all day. And it's picked up by Andy Moe. Moe on the go. Oh, it's over. Andy Moe. has won their first lacrosse championship. 